us. I'm going to begin by asking uh, Bishop Gomez really to, as somebody who's working on the front line, facing very specific challenges in Bangladesh, I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about how the injustices that you work with, how they manifest themselves, how they're experienced by people, and how you see the future unfolding in that context. So over to you, if you'd like to use that microphone there. I'm most happy to be here among you, and we can see that we all have great interest in this matter. It, is, it has its technological aspects, and now it seems in this session we enter into its moral, our human aspects as well, spiritual aspects, heart aspects. And uh, surely climate change adversities are there. Climate changes have always been there. And uh, we are now called upon elements that have been caused by humanity itself, as has been mentioned. So there is a kind of a moral perspective of the nature itself and our activities. That's one aspect. We must uh, take uh, the gifts of the earth seriously, responsibly, as human beings. And then there is a second aspect that is that uh, certain industrialized elite activities are disturbing the masses of peoples, like in Bangladesh. But I also would like to consider, keep in mind, uh, of so many other nations, peoples all over the world who are in the same situation as people in Bangladesh. In uh, Bangladesh perspective, I might try to mention four aspects of uh, where climate change adversities affect our people. One is that the land itself is uh, delta land, silting of uh, our major rivers. So it is a land that came out of the sea, so to say. And then in the climate change adverse situation now, there is a question that we have to return much of it into the sea again. And that becomes kind of a, you know, a historical failure, geographical failure, let us say. The geography of the nation is that it is fertile land from the sea itself, and we must keep it that way. We must not let it go under sea. So I think that question is to be considered also in this climate change adverse uh, results. Second is that it is a very agricultural land and the whole, uh, I think, uh, simplicity of life of the people, our culture, our literature, music, etc. whole uh, atmosphere of life of the common people who are many in our country, it is tied up to the situation of the land itself, vegetation, agriculture, all this. And, uh, uh, climate change will affect our agricultural activity and resources. Uh, things have been mentioned already, we have seen that. Our rice crop, uh, major crop, our labor farmers all involved in that sector, their situations, labor, etc., will be affected in climate change adverse uh, results. Uh, Third point is, of course, uh, po pollution uh, because of climate change, uh, because of also industrialization that is coming into our uh, country also in kind of uncontrolled fashion, or modern economies uh, tending to that line. So agriculture uh, pollutions are also there. And the fourth, of course, is Bangladesh is a very densely populated country and uh, a lot of people may be displaced, become homeless if so much land goes underwater and people lose their 
agricultural activity, they become also jobless. They have to move away. And in a densely populated nation, it will become a very uh, difficult task to adjust that displaced people. So these are the added burdens that come. When we talk about the difficulties of our people, they are already suffer a lot. Uh, but they have managed to live. People help us also. So there are some positive results in that. But then the climate change things, you know, add, it, add to their difficulties. And that is the moral, you know, question, I think. Unjust, injustice in a double sense, you know. Already there is some injustice there, but now it becomes a double. And also it is not a miserable people who suffer. People suffer with resilience and uh, tremendous hope, tenacity. So then we add to that, then we, our injustice becomes doubly so. Because it's uh, dignified people with a lot of moral strength and that we, you know, add to their troubles. We would like to consider also, I think we all surely, we call Bangladesh a poor country, there is poverty. There is poverty that is unjust and negative, which we must uh, try to get rid of, and we all wish to do that. But in the midst of that, I think also people live there. Whether we have been able to go and help them or not, they have lived. Our assistance to them is good, but it is not uh, so much that, you know, we take away their poverty. If we do not go to assist them, they still live their life. So that, that kind of dignity is there. There is a kind of a positive element of poverty in that uh, gospel-like poverty that is lived by our people and people in so many countries in the world. We should recognize as we consider the question of injustice, we should also recognize the positive aspects of people living with dignity in their lives. Uh, so we consider that. Uh, I think when we consider Bangladesh, the question comes in also that we must make a balance between the technological cultures, the technological econo economical development that we all wish nowadays, it seems, but then the agricultural system that exists in that country that has to be also taken care of. So in a country like ours or all developing countries, I think uh, development should be processed not in the sense of what developed countries have done. The temptation is that, to become totally industrialized. But to see the actual situation of the developing countries, a mixture of uh, technological development, but a major element of agricultural, where most of its population is involved also, to be able to mix and keep it balanced and see how in those two sectors, in a balanced way, in an integrated way, uh, more development can come. I think that can be a kind of a pattern for many developing countries for their future development in the, future, in the coming years, let us say. Because the temptation is to try to imitate the development process or structures of the developed countries, industrialized countries. And uh, then, uh, one more minute, okay, I shall take that then. Uh, I think in the question of uh, people of so many nations who are poor and we try to take care of them, uh, maybe we have to, as we, I, have, I have tried to indicate a bit, the positive elements of their life. Nowadays, we think, we give so much value to democracy, which is more political, but 
there is a kind of a demometric way of approaching, so cultural way of approaching the life of simple peoples. These values have to be sustained, I think. The elite industrial technological development is there, but there is a widespread agricultural nature's way of life. And that is the demo demometric values, I think. And we must read uh, into the lives of simple people, simple communities, and try to see what are the values there, and uh, kind of confirm those values. We kind of like to be caught up with elite rich uh, structures or markets of the elite people, but there is a market value of the poor people as well. They have their market their economy as well, and we must try to confirm that and uh, assist that to develop. So these would be some concerns about our country and people's of that. Thank you very much, Bishop Gomez. Um, I mean, obviously you've laid out the, the challenges in terms of the industrial infrastructure and then this traditional agricultural way of life and, and that both in a way have got to be integrated into the future.